righty, here we are. Daryl, episode number 26. How's it going today, Daryl? It's going pretty good, Luke. Uh, good to be here. Yeah, number 26. Um, another day, another another Saturday, another Canadian Bowler show. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, happy to be back. Uh, sorry we missed last weekend, guys. We uh, got our schedule a little, uh, little tied up with uh, some things going on, but that's how it goes, I suppose. Yeah, I mean... Th- it's only the two of us doing this, and when uh, life gets in the way, sometimes that can make it a little uh, iffy. We will try to stay on schedule for you guys. We really want to keep this show going on a, on a regular basis and, and keep this ball rolling, or bowl rolling, I should say. It was bowl rolling, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, well, I guess it's been brought to our attention, Daryl, that we've done 26 episodes, and it's been about 26 episodes since we've really introduced ourselves. And uh, somebody actually reached out and asked us to uh, to do that. So I guess I'll start. So I am one half of the Canadian Bowler podcast. My name is Luke or Lucas Caldwell, whatever you like to call me. doesn't really matter too much. I am an ex-Canadian national team player, uh, just a regular average dude, won a couple national championships in the sport, love the sport, love talking about it. And uh, yeah, me and my good buddy Daryl here started the podcast, and that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, and my turn. Uh, I'm Daryl Fitzgerald. Uh, a long time ago, I started up the uh, Canadian Bowler as just a website to post some coaching stuff. And with Luke's encouragement and uh, us chatting for, I want to say, over a year about what we want to do and, and where we want to go as far as bowls, we started up this podcast. I am um, the national team coach for the development and youth squads for Bulls Canada. So I work with uh, the national team, the national program, the high performance committee. Um, you name it, I've got my uh, hands in it somewhere as far as coaching. I, I do some coaching stuff for OLBA, the Ontario Lawn Bowls Association. I belong to Heritage Greens Lawn Bowling Club in Kitchener, Ontario. Um, a great club. If you have never been there and you're traveling out to Ontario, make sure you stop by the Heritage Greens Lawn Bowling Club. Uh, welcoming club, great greens, uh, definitely a, a place to, to go in and try the sport. Um, and I just love everything bowls. I've been bowling for over 25 years now. Um, I've been all over the world, Australia. Um, I've seen bowls in the UK. I never got to compete in the UK. Um, Hong Kong, China uh, competed there as well. I was on the national team. Now I coach for the national team. So um, if you have questions about bulls, uh, I think between Luke and I, we can give you some pretty good answers. Maybe not the best, but pretty good. Yeah, we can do pretty okay for a couple of Ontario lads. <laughs> uh, alrighty, guys. Well, before we get into the show today, I just remember the, uh, the normal, normal stuff that we got to go over here. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. We're currently sitting at 597 subs on YouTube, which is incredible. Uh, we're well on our way to our goal of 1,000 by the end of the year. Uh, so remember to keep sharing it with your friends and make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and that little notification bell just so you get notifications every time we go live or there's a video posted. Um, and I guess just speaking about social media and our own platform, the last time that we were live, we spoke about the presence of social media in Lawn Bowls. Yes. Daryl, why don't you uh, do a little recap on that? Um, so yeah, we, we try to encourage clubs to build a presence, um, coming out of, uh, the pandemic and even before that, but coming out of this pandemic, being away from the greens for so long, um, maybe people have forgotten about us. Maybe, uh, our membership numbers are dwindling a little bit. Um, we really believe, uh, between Luke and myself, and I'm, I'm sure you can ask around that building a social media presence, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, a website for sure, um, all of the above is really, really important for, for a club. Um, the new generation of bowlers, it might not be the current generation of bowlers, but the new generation of bowlers, the people coming up, the families, the kids, um, those that are in high school and university that are, are just coming up to, to maybe start choosing a sport and choosing a pastime um, for themselves, they're big into social media, whether it be 
TikTok or Instagram or um, any of the other social media platforms that are out there. So being a club and getting something out there and just putting out fun videos, informational videos, um, little posts here and there just to show the greens, the great outdoors, how safe and fun the sport is. Um, just come out and try show, uh, telling them when you're open and uh, when they can actually come out and do stuff. You just put it out there. You may not get anybody. You may get a couple people. You may get a whole bunch of people. You never know. But you need to get out there and, and start making your presence known. Yeah, and I don't know if it's because of us or not, but after the last show, I I'd noticed that a couple of uh, clubs had either popped up on Instagram. I think I got a couple follows on Instagram from clubs that I didn't know had stuff before, whether they're new or not. Mm -hmm. um, and I know, again, we were reached out to by a, somebody at the Sydney Lombos Club in uh, Victoria, Victoria, BC. And uh, they actually asked us if we could share this link that I've just posted in our chat of their new club's website, uh, just in case any of their members or anybody looking for that club still have their old their old link. That's just their new one that they're that they're updated to. Uh, the Heritage Green started uh, an Instagram page, which uh, kind of made me giggle at a couple of posts because I thought <laughs> they were a little funny. But that's fine. It's great. It's good good starting place. Uh, yeah, and uh, actually, my own club here in Peterborough, I don't know if, again, I have no idea if it's because we spoke about it on the show, but they uh, actually reached out to me and asked us for help so for some advice updating their website. Uh, if you're listening, I'm sorry that I accidentally deleted your uh, voicemail, <laughs> and I can't remember who it was that called me. I don't have the number to call you back. Call them back. Call uh, them. So, so give me a call, and I will be happy to do that for you. Uh, Jake has a question. Um can you share who did the Heritage website? It's one of the most aesthetically pleasing bull sites, in my opinion. Um, the guy that I can credit with that is uh, Fred Clark from the Heritage Lawn Bowling Green. Uh, Heritage Club Lawn Bowling Green. Uh, his son, I think, helped him uh, build that out. And we've been kind of tweaking it and making some changes to it ever since. And he's been one of the driving forces behind that. It's, um, I want to say it's like a WordPress style of uh, um, website I use it for my own website just to make it nice looking and it's not too hard to manage but if you can get on there and do that Heritage Greens is a great example go and check out their website go and check out their social media which they just started up um, the website has online tournament entries which every club should be trying to get into so you don't have to keep taking calls you don't have to keep trying to track names all over the place you put it online you show it online, you put in your entry, it shows up on the list, and it's instant feedback that you're in the tournament. I know, um, again, I'm not sure how a lot of clubs do it, but there's so many um, website building programs and companies out there now where you literally, it's just almost like plug and play where you log into the website. I, there might be some sort of small fees. I'm not entirely sure. And you basically just like plop in whatever you want on the website. And then there you go. And they're pretty good looking. Like I know there's a lot of big companies that do that. A lot of them have e-commerce options. If you're willing to sell merchandise or other things along that line, um, instead of maybe running a pro shop in your club, because I know a lot of those things don't really exist anymore, but it still could drive revenue for the club um, and maybe help pay for the website. Um, and yeah, and like we said before, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, they're all free. Like it costs zero dollars to to, to uh, start up. You just have to be willing to uh, run that page. Yeah. And I guess um, I'll kind of segue that into something else I want to talk about. So everybody that you're listening, tell your clubs to start getting into social media. Find somebody that knows what they're doing and can get those posts out there and, and just start throwing it out there. You'll have zero followers for maybe quite a while maybe you'll get one or two right away it's a steady building process to get your name out there get people to start sharing your stuff that's what we do with this show we are heavily invested in social media we need you to share our content we need you to like it we need you to subscribe and we put out twitter and instagram and facebook posts all the time trying to let you know what we're doing and how we're doing and that's exactly what the clubs need to do um, we've built our following over time with that. It's not quick. It's not like we exploded all of a sudden. We need to keep doing that to just get a few followers every day. Every day, every day. It's, it's a slow grind. Uh, but I want to segue that into uh, what also I think, um, and I had a quick conversation with Luke about this before the show, 
clubs need to do is thinking about going forward. We talk about volunteers and how our clubs are heavily volunteer based. You could be up in the 99% of everything that's done in a club is done by a volunteer of some type. And usually it's a core group of volunteers. Maybe it's one or two that take the heavy load and basically carry the club right through the whole season doing greens maintenance, uh, club maintenance, you know, fixing things that are broken, keeping things going that uh, are absolutely needed with the club when there's nobody else to do it. Running tournaments, taking money, doing the treasury, all that kind of stuff. When are we going to get to a point where we aren't so heavily reliant on volunteers? We're not burning out our volunteers. We can use them really effectively, let them enjoy the sport as well, and have some paid employees that can actually take care of this. Do you think we'll ever get there, Luke? Um, it's, it's such a tough question to answer. I know we've talked about this in the past, um, and definitely I agree that um, volunteer burnout is definitely a thing. Like you see people all the time that are basically running the whole club. They're the president, they're the greenskeeper, they're the tournament director, they're the master of ceremonies, they're literally doing everything under the sun to try and make that club run. And uh, usually you see that in the smaller clubs, um, which unfortunately I just don't really, for personally, I don't really see an opportunity for paid employees at smaller clubs. Um, I mean, I guess technically it's possible if they're willing to take a small amount of money to run it because like, again, I've never been a treasurer or part of a board at a club, but I just don't see there being tons and tons of revenue coming in. Um, like even more so than just like upkeep costs, let alone being able to pay somebody. Yeah. Um, I do think there's opportunity in some of the larger clubs here in Canada. Um, and I think it would actually probably bring in more revenue for that club. If the person is like part of the head of like marketing and everything else at the same time. But yeah, I, I, I don't really know. What do you think, Daryl? Um, like you, I think it's a, it's a tough sell to a lot of clubs um, to shell out more money to have somebody there. Um, I'm just thinking it, I could see it being a big benefit to have somebody at the club all the time to have it open. I mean, core business hours, you say like, you know, we're open from 10 to six or, or whatever. Um, but have business hours where people can come in and actually see the game. It's not based on we're running a jitney today so we can be open for a few hours or we're going to run an open house for these couple days for a couple weeks and then there's nothing else you have to kind of hope and guess maybe that the club will be open um not really steady hours not uh you know early in the morning or late at night when people are off of work um usually people are there playing leagues and running leagues so how many people have the time to take somebody aside and and say hey this is the game this is how you play you know you should really just come out and try it sometime you know, entice them to do it. That doesn't always happen. It'd be great if clubs had somebody to keep it open and and do a bunch of the stuff that um, volunteers do today. And uh, then you can get people in the door whenever. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is just a kind of a question on what you said, Daryl. What, what do you think the hours would have to look like for a club to succeed because I think it's it's so tough because you could run like the whole like eight to eight to five model or eight to four model but then I think that you, that way you eliminate all of the people that work a uh, regular job and then if you go too late I think you might eliminate some of the uh, um, like the the older crowd the, who wants to go out in the morning if you're not opening until noon I I think uh, at least for us in Canada it has to be the the late night model so you know, have somebody come in in the afternoon and run it until late. Um, it's like a 12 to 8 yeah, deal and, or something. And have it open for the time when people are off of work or on lunch or doing that kind of stuff where they can just come down and, and try it out. For the early morning stuff, you can still have a volunteer come in and, and run the league or uh, if you have an early morning league or start the tournament if you're going to have a tournament that starts at like 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. or whatever. Um, True. that can still happen, but then you're not just reliant on people to, to be there all the time, trying to keep the club open to get people in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
I guess uh, moving forward in the volunteer thing, um, we've seen that in the province of Saskatchewan that Gene Roney was uh, uh, awarded awarded yeah. a, uh, an, an award. I don't really know how <laughs> I can't speak today, but she was uh, given an award um, in for her, uh, I believe it's her coaching and volunteering stuff uh, yeah. around the Regina Lawn Bowling Club. Um, so I just want to give a, a shout out to her, Jean. Um, I don't know you super well, but you've uh, coached me um, at the national level a couple of times. And I think uh, you've done a lot of great work with a lot of great bowlers in and around the Regina Lawn Bowling Club and in the, the whole in the whole national scene here in Canada. Yeah. Um, Jean Roney is, I, I can say it, she's a legend out in, in Saskatchewan and uh, the Roneys in general. So Keith as well. They've done a ton of stuff out in Saskatchewan. They've been um, huge boosts for for the sport in that province. You can see just uh, their fingerprints all over everything that happens there, whether it's trying to bring up younger players, um, be involved at the club, do all the volunteer stuff, run tournaments, run help with Canadian championships when it's there. Um, I've played against Gene and Keith, um, and they've whooped my butt a couple times. I've, I've given Keith at least a run for his money. Um, but Keith again is a legend in his own right. Gene, uh, I've had the pleasure of actually, uh, spending a bunch of time with her in the last couple of years, whether it's with the high performance committee, um, going to Australia and the Commonwealth games and being there with her as the team manager and me as a coach and, um, she's she's been awesome and she does so much and wants to do so much that i think this um this award is just a great recognition of all the time that she's put in there and i'm i'm so happy that uh she was able to get it absolutely and on that note we have a, a short video um this was posted by um uh the awards uh, to let you know who Jean is, what she's done, and I think it's a, a really well uh, put together video. So we wanted to play it here. It's only um, about a minute and a half or so. So uh, enjoy that, and we will chat to you right after the video plays. I've always been involved in all kinds of sports, and at the time I was very involved in golfing. My husband and I got married, and he was always involved in sports as well. Decided instead of spending all my time on the golf course and not being able to spend time with him, I started lawn bowling. And then I became very competitive and really enjoyed it, so the golf went by the wayside. The sport has really meant a lot to me, and that's why I'm so passionate about it. It's allowed me opportunity to travel. It's allowed me opportunity to meet great people and also to participate in the sport and also feel like I've given back to the sport and see other people accomplish their dreams. Jean's very deserving of recognition, particularly for the 2020 uh, Sport Awards. She's just one of those people who uh, just gets in and whatever needs to be done it'll be done. Again, it's her Saskatchewan work ethic, the kind of volunteer you want on your team. That's right through from organizing the coaches for the club, the teaching newcomers to bowl, right through to acting as a team manager with the Canadian team in the Commonwealth Games. I guess the most rewarding has been seeing the sport at the national and provincial level progress, particularly in the coaching area. When I first started, there was very little coaching, no real organized coaching. And since then, we've developed a great coaching program. We've also developed a good long-term athlete development program. It has been wonderful to see it progress in that way. Thank you for all you've done and all you continue to do for bowls in Canada, bowls in Saskatchewan, bowls in our club. And also thank you, Jean, for me personally. Such a good video. They did such a great job on that. And they I think they really did a good job on uh, letting Jean kind of talk about her, what she's so passionate about. 
yeah and it was it was great to see that happening i wish it would happen a lot more because there's so many great volunteers and impulse uh one of the the gentleman on on the video david callum uh, is a, a huge volunteer in saskatchewan as well so it was great to see him say some kind words about gene and uh give her the kudos that she deserves yeah 100 percent. so it looks like there's a little uh, conversation going on in chat so uh there's a question is there a possibility of having a national tv commercial to increase awareness of the benefits of lawn bowling in canada perhaps all the Canadian clubs could help fund it. And uh, Jake, being Jake and uh, knowing these things, uh, says that the cost to that would be the barrier. Uh, for a 30 second ad on CTV, it would cost $110,000. <laughs> Holy. I knew it wasn't going to be cheap, but I can't believe it cost that much for a 30 second ad on a, on a major TV station. It's just like we said, though, um, before, um, just. I think the the presence of social media in today is almost more powerful than TV. Um, personally, um, for the younger generation, anyways, like I don't know about you, Daryl, but when's the last time you turn on TV and watch TV? Yeah, I don't have cable anymore. I stream everything, right? So that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at too. So I think it it almost makes more sense. Um, I know we've done it in the past, Daryl, um, boosting posts on Facebook. And liter literally everybody you know uses Facebook, and it doesn't cost much. Like, I mean, you could spend a lot if you wanted to, but we've seen um, massive jumps in our posts by just spending around twenty dollars, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars. Um, so I think something like that uh, could be very helpful. So, a uh, question out to Jake: For that cost, is it just like a one-shot thirty-second ad? Or is that for getting it to play a number of times in, in different provinces? I'd be kind of curious to know that. I mean, it's it's expensive regardless of how you slice it, but um, that'd be interesting. Yeah, it's uh, true. Um, building on that social media thing, everybody out there, I know um, publicity is a hard thing to do. Social media is free. You just have to be consistent. You have to find those things that really tweak people. So whether it's a hashtag that's going on, whether it's something that you can kind of build on, like if the Olympics is being announced, start talking about the Olympics a little bit. If Commonwealth Games is going on, make sure you loop into Commonwealth Games. <laughs> if some of your athletes or club members are doing some great things, make sure you post about it and get people interested. And you never know when, when something will just latch on and that post will take off. And it could be one out of 100, but you, you get that one post that really takes off and that'll help you a lot. Yeah, it could be one out of 100. It could be one out of a million um, for really all, all that matters. It's like, look at, uh, I know this is completely off topic, but look at the people in the social media world who have found um, massive success. A lot of those people have been doing things like this podcast um, where they're doing their own thing and they're do been doing it for years and nobody's ever watched them. And now they're the biggest people in the world. Yeah. That's, that's a great example. And that's, that's why we do this. We're, we're hoping to make this a lot bigger than it is. This uh, podcast We're we're just under 600 subscribers. Now we want to get up to a thousand by the end of the year. We want to get more than that going forward. And we want to promote bowls get it out there there's people that have come to our channel to to watch and subscribe that have never thrown a bowl in their life they have questions about it they think something's really unique and intriguing some of the bowls videos we have out there um are kind of neat and that's what we want we just want to get that exposure so the more people we have that subscribe and like to our videos the more people that may not know about bowls will actually see that and come here and that's that's really important for us I guess uh, going forward, speaking about um, exposure and bulls, let's talk about BPL 13, Daryl. Uh, probably one of the, uh, in my opinion, the most watched, biggest premier um, bulls, the highest level sort of uh, non-national events uh, that happens around the world. Yep. Um, it's on a quick 50-some-odd uh, day turnaround from BPL 12, which just recently finished uh, a yep. couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, uh I don't know. I know there was some team changes that were going on. I haven't read too much into that, Daryl. You might be able to fill fill the audience in a little bit better than me. 
yeah so uh the bpl for this this run 13 uh will be uh april 20th to 23rd um it'll be at the uh uh bulls pine rivers uh in queensland so they're they're switching clubs they're going to go back and forth um the teams remain the same so there's the adelaide pioneers the brisbane pirates the melbourne pulse the melbourne roys the murray steamers um Perth suns sydney lions and tweed head ospreys so uh the teams that were there in 12 are going to be there in 13. uh but loose right there are some uh personnel changes so if you if you've watched it before if you've watched some of these um players play you might know some of them and uh it might actually change who you cheer for depending on who's who's switched around and either who's come back or who's left so uh the pioneers um got a new player in caitlin inch she was with the murray steamers uh last round so she'll be um joining uh, scott Solburn and wayne rediger uh the brisbane pirates uh, will be Jeremy Henry again, Aaron Houston again, but um, Kira Burke, who was the under 18, I think she might have been 18, uh, player, youngest uh, on the BPL for last round, will be replaced by Kelsey Cottrell, who's uh, a very well known uh, female bowler in Australia, well, very accomplished. So um, it's a debate whether you think they're better off with the younger Kira or uh, Kelsey, who's, um, you know, getting up there too legend status as far as Australia Bulls goes. Um, Melbourne Pulse remain the same. So it's Barry Lester, Gary Kelly, and Ellen Ryan. And that's a strong team. Uh, Melbourne Roys remain the same. Aaron Wilson, Matthew Flapper, and Carla Krizanek. Uh, another really strong team. They're the ones that I picked to win 12 and uh, they didn't do so well, but uh, maybe this time around. Uh, Murray Steamers, Ryan Bester, and Michael Walker as always. But they replaced Caitlin Inch with Natasha Van uh, Eldick, and hopefully I got that pronunciation right. For those that don't know uh, that name, Natasha Van Eldick, it's actually Natasha Scott. If you know Natasha Scott from Australia Bulls, uh, national team player, uh, great player in her own right. Um, her sons welcome back a couple, um, a couple players that left for BPL 12, and they they also drop uh, Lee Schreiner who was there in BPL 12, but not in DPL 13. So they have a few switches. Uh, Cody Packer comes back, Ray Pierce stays, and uh, Christina Christic comes back to play as well. Sydney Lions remain the same. It's Ben Twist, Aaron Sheriff, and Karen Murphy. And then the Tweedhead Ospreys, the champions of BPL 12, stay the same. Aaron Tees, Aaron Tees uh, Corey Woodlock, and Chloe Stewart. And uh, that was... Luke's pick last year or last round, and they won. So uh, Luke's on a hot streak, one for one. <laughs> who are you picking? Who are you picking for BPL thirteen, Daryl? I'm gonna go with Murray Steamers. I'm gonna go with Ryan Bester this round. I think with uh, Natasha Van Eldick or Natasha Scott, as many know, um, I think they're possibly a stronger team. And I think uh, they may make a, lo a few waves this time. And of course, they've got Ke uh, Coach Kevin Anderson. How can you go wrong? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think I got to stick with my my same pick. I mean, how can you uh, how can you bet against the defending champions, especially especially on such a quick turnaround? They're just a team stacked full of young talent, people that I've been able to spend time with and see what they're like on the green. So um, I'm pretty confident that they're going to come back for the repeat. Uh, but if I have to pick my dark horse team, I really don't think you can uh, rule out the Sydney Lions. Uh, with Ben Twist, uh, Karen Murphy, and uh, Aaron Sheriff. Aaron Sheriff. Yep. And it's also coached by the legendary Steve Glasson, I believe. Um, so I, I think that's a, that's my dark horse team. I don't think you can rule them out either. It, it's really interesting. The teams that I thought were going to be like super dominant um, weren't necessarily in BPL 12. But the nature of this competition, the players that are in it, that can switch on a um, on a dime just just as easy there's so many strong strong players strong teams um that i don't think you can go wrong you know pick the team that you like cheer for them cheer them on and uh i mean that's why there isn't a lot of uh repeat winners it changes all the time because there's just so many great great players yeah, so for everybody out there listening, I would highly recommend tuning in to uh, BPL 13. Uh, BPL is so much fun to watch. Um, if you missed the last one, there's quite a few recap videos and highlights on uh, Bulls Australia's Facebook page. 
Um, so if you kind of need to get a feel about what's going on, and if you also need to kind of learn about the rules, if you look on our YouTube page, we had a preview show for BPL 12. Obviously, some of the teams uh, will be a little different, but all the rules and stuff are laid out there. It's a pretty good video. I think we did a good job on it. Um, <laughs> I don't know if there's going to be another one coming out. It's a lot of work, but uh, who knows? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll see that if people if people are interested. Yeah. Um, and I, I highly recommend people to, to go out and check that because I think for any other country looking at that, it's a good um, eye opener for how exciting bowls can be, how fun it can be um, at that level and um, with that format. If you can somehow move that over to your country and obviously for your demographics and for, for how things run in your country, maybe change it up a bit have that exciting competition that really brings people out and um, showcases the game in a different light where it's quick and fast and aggressive and uh, you've got some great bowlers out there just making some great shots it makes for great clips it makes for great news it makes for um, just entertaining to watch as well where um, not all bowls games will be that way so you want a quick grab how can we do something like the BPL in Canada or UK or any other country, right? Yeah, 100%. Um, I guess moving forward, uh, I guess we're staying in the uh, country of Australia. They have, I don't know if it's been announced previously, but I just seen it for the first time. Uh, they announced uh, the Australian Open for uh, 2021 running from June 12th to June 25th on the Gold Coast, as always. Um, entries are open. I'm sure nobody that's listening to our show, unless you live in Australia, will be able to attend this year. So sorry, John. John Seidman, <laughs> our super fan. You will not be able to play this year. Um, but the Australian Open, I don't, though, I'm sure there'll be some live streaming um, around that. Um, so fun stuff to watch. Um, there's tons of great players in Australia. So even without the internationals that do not live there, I'm sure it'll be a great event. This will probably be almost a truly Australian Open um, with obviously the internationals that live down in Australia uh, taking part. Maybe some, maybe some Kiwis. Yeah. Um, travel restrictions are, are pretty hot. So um, we're we're still dealing with a bunch of ups and downs and all overs in, in Canada. So. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> Keeping you I'm up. Tired to, yeah. I'm tired today, Daryl. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me. Uh, that's all right, man. Uh, I wanted to, to throw this out to our community as well. Um, we want to engage with you. That's what the show is all about. We want your stories. We want your news. We want to know what's going on with you, with your club, with your province. Um, the Gene Veroni story is a great story, and I'm glad we were able to showcase it. But if you have volunteers in your club, in your province, um, that you know do a tremendous job, you know, let us know about it. We're more than happy to shout out your club. We're more than happy to shout out the volunteers, the great people in the sport. Um, we're looking for, obviously, interviews with great people. Uh, we've tried to reach out to people internationally as well to get that. Our Catherine Rednall interview has done really well. So if you haven't seen that, you know, go to our uh, YouTube page and, and check that out. We, we just want to engage with our community. What do you want to hear about? What do you want to talk about? We want um, that interaction in chat as well. So share this out. Let's get more people in the chat. Let's get more people tuning in to talk about bowls and really blow this up so that we can promote the sport. We can get people into your clubs and uh, take notice of this sport. It's a great sport. It's safe. It's um, a great sport to come out of the pandemic and get some fresh air, get some out time, uh, outdoors time um i think there's so many benefits to to what we do that um if we can promote it the right way we can we can come out of this really well yeah i think it's a, a really good time for us to uh to grow the sport just uh with so many things being limited and so many things being canceled um to answer the question in the chat no none of the clubs i i'm assuming none of the clubs in ontario are open yet i think it's usually around uh the may long weekend mm -hmm. Uh, when you start to see clubs kind of opening up. I mean, last week we probably could have played here in Ontario. It was 25 degrees and beautiful outside. Um, 
but um as far as i know i haven't even heard much uh surrounding the covid restrictions for the year yeah uh, i'm i if I had to guess, I would say we'd be similar to last year um, with the fingers crossed. There's no summertime spike in COVID. But so I know that um, we, we've canceled national championships in Canada, and I don't know all the other countries what they're doing. I know. Um, I think Scotland may have canceled some stuff recently. Um, I'd have to double check that, but I know that provinces in Canada are right now looking at ways to do something whether it's later in the year and have a competition just to when vaccines are out when people are able to actually uh come together and bowl again the province hopefully is looking to have an event it might not be an official provincial event qualify for anything but just something that people can come out and enjoy the sport have some really good competition which a lot of us have been just starving for um and Bring people back together. I mean, Bulls is such a great community, and I miss all the people in it. This is a great way to interact, but it's not the same. It's not the same. I got a quick question for you, Daryl. Um, whenever we get back to it, how bad do you think you're going to be? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to be pretty rusty. Um, you know, sitting on my butt in this chair for work every day. Um, Having limited out time, uh, outdoors time, having limited um, athletic pursuits outside of that, it, it's going to be, you know, creaks and cracks and sore knees and sore backs probably for a little while until I get right back into it. Um, I'm anticipating that I'll be bad, but hopefully I'll be, be able to bounce back uh, quite quickly. And Jake, yeah, there's there's your hashtag right there, rusty butt. <laughs> I'm pretty nervous. Like I think, like I like it. It's been, I guess, almost two years. It'll be since I rolled a bowl, so I'm pretty much expecting myself to just be straight hot dog water whenever I get back out on the green. Um, especially with my awful delivery and my broken body for most of my work and whatever else, uh, I can't see it being a whole lot of fun. But at the same time, in my uh, <laughs> career, I've done uh, s significantly better when not practiced. Um, for a long period of time, so maybe I'll be maybe I'll be really good. Who knows? Uh, Kathy Greener, maybe I can beat you. You know what? I wouldn't put it past anybody. Um, I, I have a Darryl's feeling not that... that good. You could beat him on a regular day. That's true too. Right? Uh, I watched I... him give up six in Australia with one drive. I cleaned I cleaned the deck of every single one of uh, our bowls and left all the opponents there. Yeah, that was great. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I anticipate it's it's going to be a while before people get back into form. Some people are lucky enough that they've been able to bowl um, in other provinces, which is great. But I'm just looking to get out there. It, it's not necessarily for me, the bowling. I love bowling. I love competing. I love doing that. But right now, it's the social, the seeing people, the being out there on the green and just chatting. Um catching up with people I haven't seen in so long. Like there's people that I saw every day when I'm bowling and now I don't see them at all. So it's, it's something that I really, really miss. And I think that's something that's we're we're all missing right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm really missing it. Uh, like I've said so many times in the past, uh, I don't necessarily miss the game. It's more so the people like you say, and just the, the camaraderie and everything else that comes along with it. Jay coming up with the, uh, the great quotes here. Luke will be a three-day-old soldier coming up flat. <laughs> probably. Let's be real. Probably. I'll probably roll a bull, break my leg, and not be able to get back up. So, And uh, Cam, uh, McClellan in the chat, you're not wrong. I, I don't think um, most provinces will see anything really um, roll out until August, September. Um I think on Ontario there is a plan to to revisit in June or July um some idea of having a week long competition for the province to say, hey, we're gonna run like singles and pairs and mixed pairs or something like that, um, for everybody to enter and uh compete at that level. But they're gonna just keep reviewing it and see when that week can actually land. Is it August? Is it September? Is it actually gonna happen? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I would like to be optimistic, but I think I have to play devil's advocate here. And uh, we said the same thing last year. You did. 
so I mean, this year's a little different with the vaccine rollout, but again, who knows what things are going to look like. So uh, I guess we can stay optimistic, but we'll see. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so going forward for this channel, um, all of you out there, we love your support. We appreciate your support. Make sure you share in this uh, with everybody that you can. Make sure you're letting people know about the show. Um, we want to start rolling out some other content. And Luke and I have been chatting about plans to start doing some videos. And if you don't see them coming out, make sure you hold us accountable. Okay? Uh, message us. Come into the chat and say, hey, where's that video that you talked about? Uh, where's that content that you said you're going to do outside of the show? We need that motivation. We need that kick in the butt as well um, to make sure that we keep growing this channel and making it something special, which I think we can. Yeah, and I guess on that note, guys, um, speaking of keeping us accountable, uh, who do you want to see on the Canadian Bowler After Dark? We have been basically flatlined, not necessarily on ideas, but of getting a show together and actually running it. Uh, so like, what do you guys want to see on that show? I think it's probably more popular than this one. Uh, so if you guys have uh, any ideas, we'd be more than happy to, to listen to those. Yeah, we'd like to get back at the After Dark and, and have that chat. We think it's just a fun show. It's something that we can do to um, chat with a bunch of bowlers at once and, and get that just casual banter going, which I think is important because we get, we get to some pretty good um, uh, issues and have discussion around them, which we don't normally have. And if there's people that you want to hear from, if there's issues that you want us to talk about and have a, a group from all over Canada talk about it, maybe even international, um, we're willing to reach out to people and, and have those conversations. So um, look for hopefully an After Dark coming in the next few weeks if we can pull it together. But, you know, just keep letting us know what you want to see, what you want to hear about and who you want to see on. Uh, Jake, I'm absolutely willing to do my video of my first bowl in two years, but am I, is there any stipulations that I am or am not allowed to lose the COVID-15 before I do that? <laughs> I'm not sure I'll be able to swing my gut out of the way at the moment, so. Luke's, uh, Luke's got to uh, get that fitness down, and then he'll, no, he'll go out there and roll a no, bowl. I'll try. <laughs> See what happens. I got brand new bowls sitting in the closet waiting to go. So they look still nice. Still in the wrapper. They look nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it, Daryl. Um, I don't have much else to talk about. I think we nailed all of our talking points for today. Uh, a little bit of a shorter one, no guest, uh, but. A good show nonetheless. And here. for everybody in chat, thank you for coming out and, and chatting with us. Promote this show, help us out. Uh, like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. Um, we really appreciate every single one of you. And I just wanted to uh, mention something that I forgot at the start. Uh, if you missed the start of the show or you know anybody who doesn't like watching the show live, uh, we're available on all major podcast platforms, uh, including Apple, Spotify, Stitcher. I think just about everywhere you could possibly listen to a podcast, we're out there. Uh, the VOD goes up live on YouTube almost instantly after the show if you missed the start of it, and that's what you'd like to do. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. So until next time, guys, uh, I hope that all your bowls are touchers.